Hey guys, we are in Hooker Hill and that means we're going to explore Itaewon Dong. Itaewon, yeah, where to start? Those who've been to Seoul must have heard of Itaewon, the foreigner mecca of Korea. Over the last decade, Itaewon has always been subject to strong stereotypes and prejudices. Foreigners, Hooker Hill, Sketchy, Yongsan Garrison, Homo Hill, one of the best club scenes, Halloween are just a few things that pop into my mind when thinking of Itaewon. You do you like it, Ewan? Partying, yeah. I thought I knew Ewan well until I didn't. And maybe you didn't either. But before I bring you back to the early days, let's start with a recent event that will go into the Ewan history books forever the tragic Ewan crush. South Korea, where the death toll now tops 150 in the crush of people who were out celebrating Halloween. In this video, we'll see Ewan through the eyes of John, Matt, Aaron, Joe, uh, and of course, me. Nice. So buckle your seatbelt because it will be a deep dive into Ewan. Oh man. Okay, so we're in front of uh, Ewan's famous landmark, the Hamilton Hotel. I guess it's a good starting point to start talking about the Ewan crush, John. Yeah, so this is where it happened. Uh, everybody probably remembers where they were that day in Korea. I was over in Hebangchon and I went over the hill and came down the alleys because you couldn't really make it through here, it was so crowded. I walked down here and I knew something had happened near the Hamilton, but I really wasn't sure. So as I was walking along the street, I saw a ton of ambulances here. Later on, looking at some of my pictures from above, uh, I noticed that they were loading bodies. I went inside the Hamilton Hotel and went to the roof. I was immediately kicked off along with some other journalists. As I was coming down, I was kind of zigzagging through the hotel just in case they were watching me. Uh -huh. And I ended up coming out a side door over there. I open up the door and all I see is just shoes, bags, bits of costume lining the side of the alley. I didn't know what had happened at that point still. Thousands of people fell and were stuck together where about 150 died that night, I think. Yeah, now we enter the, yeah. the street where it all happened. There's exit one behind us where people were just streaming out all through the day. They never shut off the subways. Yeah. And people were coming out and directly going into this alley. By around here, it was so packed that you just couldn't um, really move. So people were trapped, they fell on top of other people and other people fell on them. Uh, people were uh, being crushed, literally blacking out. They were arranging piles of cell phones uh -huh. and just, you know, you could hear them ringing uh, very often. I, I saw there was a, a foreigner standing right over here in front of the Stella sign. So I came over to her and said, did you see what happened? And she was like, I was part of it. Like, I collapsed, you know, people were on top of me. I passed out. I thought I was going to die. And when I woke up, I was up here behind the tape and she lost her, her phone her wallet. This was her first weekend in Korea, so she didn't know, sorry, in Seoul, she didn't know where to go. Do you think that this, the Itaewon crush, has had an impact on Itaewon? Oh, yes. How did it change Itaewon? I, I do know that some of the restaurants down there at the corner by Noksukyang Station, uh, a few months later, I was hearing that they were saying they had about a 30% reduction in customers. Uh, but right after this area was abandoned, we're going to see what happens in uh, at the end of October this year. Will there be any Halloween celebrations here? I have a feeling there won't be. We're now filming this in September, still. Yeah. It's almost October. I guess we're about to find out. The Itaewon crush left a deep scar on Itaewon. John took these photos on Halloween weekend a year later. Unsurprisingly, a lot fewer celebrations. Only time will tell if Itaewon can bounce back. It has always been the best place to celebrate Halloween. But how did that happen? I want to understand Itaewon beyond the settlement of the American Yongsan base. I'm on my way to meet Joe, who knows a lot about Itaewon's history, and uh, he's gonna show us. Itaewon wasn't where Itaewon is. This is where Itaewon used to be, right here. We're by uh, Yongsan High School, and uh, Itaewon, from the end of the Goyo Dynasty, it was a waypoint. Uh, that's why the ends of the word one. Things that end with the word one tend to be waypoints where you go and get fresh horses on, on your travels, maybe spend the night, go have an inn, have some food or something. And Itaewon was the closest way station outside the southern part of the city. 
is it like Mangwon and Sariwon, like mm, places like that? In, in Daguan and yeah, Sariwon, yes, and all those, it's kind of like that. This was kind of the gateway for a lot of uh, emissaries coming into Seoul. Uh, but it's, it's kind of funny though that, that this is the original location of Itaewon. Right. But Itaewon isn't here anymore. No, Itaewon isn't here anymore. This happened during the Japanese colonial period. So you look right over there and you see the remnants of the American military base. But it wasn't the American military base before, it was the Japanese military base. But even before that, that was the location in the 1880s where Chi the Chinese army, the Qing army, yeah. was stationed uh, around the 1880s, around the time of the Gapshun Revolt. And they were the ones that, that, that Queen Min and, and the royals brought in to quell an uprising. And they were stationed here because armies couldn't be inside the city. Chinese originally stationed there, then the then the Japanese came in here and they didn't like all of this. They, well they wanted they wanted all the Koreans out and they wanted Japanese in. So if you look a little closely in some of these places, you can see that there's some uh, Japanese colonial houses still around. They pushed the original residents out and moved them to where Itaewon is now. Here and there you can still see Japanese era houses. But the most remarkable remnant is the stairs here technically in the Hebangjeon area. Okay, so we're in front of some stairs. Right, these are the famous 108 stairs. You might have seen this in a lot of Korean dramas and people are like, why are these stairs here? This used to be the stairway to a Shinto war shrine at the top. Oh, that was here. Yes. Today in Itaewon, it isn't easy to find houses of the early settlement. Not because they aren't there anymore, but because of the new facades covering them. Luckily, Matt can show us where some of them are. Many of these buildings date from about the late 60s to early 70s, except for a handful. Mm -hmm. This one right here that we're looking at. Oh, this wait. Is, this is 1938. This one here? Yep. Wait, there's, there's no way you can tell with this brand new... No, they, they all have like new facades on them. Most buildings are from the 60s, except for a few that are from 38, 39. There's a, a US military map from 1946, but it's based on a 1938 Japanese map. And you can see the settlement in Itaewon. And most of that stuff has been rebuilt, but mm -hmm. kind of incredibly, there's still a handful of these from that initial time when Itaewon was sort of first settled. Too bad you can't see it because of the facade. The first club or famous bar in Itaewon. UN Club 1957, I think. From 1957, that American soldiers, I guess, could stay off base. They could sleep off base if they wanted. And so that kind of started to push the popularity of Base Wan. I think before that, soldiers probably didn't come here that often. Um, but of course, Koreans wanted to attract them and mm -hmm. get those dollars, especially once Park Chung hee was in power. So in the late 50s, Itaewon started to change more rapidly, with the GIs being allowed to spend more time off base. And before we knew it, there was a hookah hill. And of what I have heard, a reputation of Itaewon being more sketchy, dodgy, a place to avoid, if you will. It was known as a pretty rough time. I mean, there was lots of red light districts. If you look at old US military maps, red light districts lined up everywhere and then they just whittle 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 down and then the last one was last ones were hooker hill and the one in front of yongsan station which no longer exists yes that one disappeared and by 2004 or so koreans were starting to come here and kind of going like oh, okay like more adventurous people uh-huh but kind of like okay let's try this maybe it's not so scary but it used to have a reputation for being dangerous oh, and yeah. scary until when do you think that reputation Get well, hold and either one. I think it still exists. It, it still exists. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think the crash helped. No. Certainly, after the disaster, and also in 2020, uh, end of April, early May, there was a COVID-19 outbreak here, and we saw how Koreans react to news about Itaewon. They uh, turn their back on it. It's it's a diseased place. You know, this has happened multiple times, as I think that has well, reported on for me. 1980s, especially when the first yeah the first foreigner was found to have HIV, and especially in 1987 when the first Korean died of it, and that led people to freak out and avoid Itaewon, and it was saying, you know, the Korea Times is openly saying, like, a lot of the gay bars aren't being frequented, and people are afraid, that, that had a big effect on Itaewon at that time. And then the same happened, like you said, during COVID. Exactly. Itaewon has always been a portal to the outside world, and Koreans know how to shut it when they want to. Mm -hmm. You're always great. I can't take you anymore. 
Now going to the rooftop of a building from where we can see everything around here, either one. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. Okay. wow! I wasn't expecting this, John. <laughs> Nobody does at first. Wow! Yeah, this is awesome. Hamilton looks like a legal block from here. <laughs> I know. And you can see how isolated this is from the rest of the city by the base being right there. I see a lot of huge mansions. Mansions. What yeah. kind of people live in either one? I think a lot of them are diplomat people. I've been to a few of them, like a lot of long-term people who worked on base, like not as, you know, necessarily military, but like high up people. Okay, here we go. Oh, wow. Quaint little area right below us here is the hill, which contains Poker Hill down there, and then what we call Homo Hill, and then last Halal Hill leading to the mosque. Oops, sorry. To me, it's actually quite funny to see a mosque Hooker Hill and Homo Hill as neighbors, all next to each other. Well, Is that a weird coincidence? It's uh, certainly not a coincidence. These are where kind of the marginal communities uh, that have one foot abroad uh, established themselves. Uh, it's absolutely not a coincidence that all these little enclaves would be together next to each other. Texas Village, that's what Hooker Hill was called. And I, I found one article that said uh, the name came because the gangster in the 50s who ran this area, his nickname was Texas. Cool. And so that's one story. Who knows if it's true? So I guess this is what happens when you have John Dunbar in the video. You find places like this. <laughs> the Eater One puzzle wow. pieces are slowly nice. falling together. But there are many more exciting stories. So hold tight. Oh, For now, let's understand more of that place to avoid reputation and go into Hooker Hill. One thing is already sure. Eater One, knowing the stories, is never boring. Basically, this was known as Texas Alley. There were seven clubs, six of them were in this area, that had the special licenses so they could sell beer cheaper, which was to entice the American soldiers off base. And of course, there were women working there. Right here was Lucky Club, which was also Lucky Hotel. And there's a book by a the son of the CIA chief of station. So the head of the American CIA, who was here between 1969 and 72, he figures out that these other kids who are students on the uh, Yongsan base that they smoke pot so he's like oh like, where can we get some he's like oh so they bring them right here and they're like hey happy smoke and a lady pulls out a pack of cigarettes which they basically empty the tobacco and put marijuana in and, and sell it and then he talks about you know coming here and meeting up with a girl and uh, you know like skipping school and getting stoned and like partying they, they rented a room and a whole bunch of people came and had a party and uh. and this is the son of the CIA <laughs> What a story. So because we're now at the foot of Hooker Hill, right? I imagine decades ago that used to be a little bit all over the place, right? Or has it it's, always been up there? It's, well, it's always been a, sort of yeah, along here, probably a little bit here and, and down here a bit, and a little bit up here. These are two uh, former brothels. Ah, oh, yes. They're now events. 1958. Every time you walked up here, there'd be girls coming out and calling you. you so the famous steps in either one. Right here, that was the 007 club. That was one of the other uh, seven special clubs, tourism clubs. And of course, those clubs, uh, Koreans weren't allowed in them. Korean women were allowed, Korean men were not. Behind us, where they're, it's all been torn down, uh, this had been... A theater that was called Tapyong Kukchang. And it looked like this with the stairs in front and the old 007 bar on the side. Those steps down there, you can see in movies from the 1980s, these uh, scenes set by those steps. Because anytime they wanted to show, you know, misbehaving girls going to a bad place, it's a one. It seems like it one was always a stage for something media worthy and not always contributing to the already lovely image. So there was the Burger King murder in 1997, right here. Oh, it used to be on this floor only? Yeah, it was right there. It used to be right there. And 20 meters down the street was the Jamie Panic murder on St. Patrick's Day in 2001. Both homicides deserve an entire video. But I suggest you look it up, because I will bring you now to a fantastic painter, Aaron Cosgrove. He regularly paints the people of Itaewon. Some people are so iconic that they have become part of their neighborhood. So I'm gonna meet with an artist who paints everyday people. I really love his style. His name is Aaron Cosro. So let's go check his art out. 
Yeah, this is it. Hey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good morning. What a... Uh, I didn't know you live in a church. Well, it was a church. It was a church. It was a church. Oh, wow, this is nice. The Makkali man. I know the Makkali man, yeah. I live in Hongde, so I meet him every week. And it's great how you captured his personality. Oh, wow, you have a lot. Yes, that's her. What I'm actually curious about is how do you choose the people that you paint, especially in 81? I'm generally attracted to, uh, to subjects that have a, a specific and iconic Korean vibe. When you look at uh, an Ajuma or an Ajashi, you can, you know, you just, you look at them and you just know, I mean, that's definitely just the Korean Ajashi, Ajuma vibe. Mm -hmm. That's the style. I like people who uh, have small businesses, have small jobs, their backgrounds, their surroundings are iconically Korean. They're filled with uh, interesting objects and details, lots of details. Why did you move to the area? Well, like most people, I came to the area because uh, of the nightlife and just mm -hmm. the fun. You know, I was, you know, I was a party boy. You know, I was at, at Soul Pub every night. It's closed now. My friends and I, we were there every night, you know, just enjoying ourselves, having the beer. And when Soul Pub closed around four or five o'clock in the morning, everybody migrated up to Hooker Hill. And that's when you would go to Old Town. And Old Town would be open until sunrise. That place was just insane. All the scoundrels from the area would be there, you know, until the sunrise, fighting outside, drinking outside, crying, hugging. It was a very emotional and very fun place. If you like that kind of wild, crazy atmosphere, which I certainly mm -hmm. did, I would sit outside uh, on the ledge and I would uh, draw people's portraits and they would, you know, give me a drink in, in payment. That's kind of, you know, how I spent a lot of my, uh, my younger years. So what would you say is your favorite ET1 personality that you have painted? Yeah. Well, there are certain people that I go back to uh, again and again. You know, Mama Kim, I've painted her three times. Mama Kim of the Grand Old Opera, she's been running that bar for 43, 44 years now. She has the whole history of ET1 essentially in her bar when it was, the area was Predominantly, uh, you know, a hangout for the American soldiers at the Yongsan Army Base. <laughs> yeah, somebody make it. That's an American guy. Oh, yeah. He yeah. make it, you know, he's a killer. Big one, you saw. Was once a, a thriving business of young soldiers, has now completely changed into young Koreans, you know, from different neighborhoods coming, checking out new interesting bars. Uh, she used to have rules that said you know, only country music was allowed. Everyone talks about Mama Kim the owner of Grand Ole Opry, a bar on Hooker Hill that hasn't changed a bit since it opened in 1975. Not even the owner. We are in 1975, oh. magic 24, I'm 50 years old. I'm now 84. My husband died 10 years ago. Very good person. Just to think about army, he have a daughter away two daughters. He make it first to wife, oh. make it two daughters. And wife is say, you are not army, you are not me. Then my husband said, I need the army. Then my pistol, get the hell out of me. That's why I divorced two daughters. Second wife, Japanese, seven months of divorce. Me full time here. Number three wife of Korea. She's young. He go Vietnam three times. She bought a partner. <laughs> That's why eight years later, then he's a 49, me only be, me 42. If you want to get an idea of what ET1 was like back in the 70s, this place is an excellent place to start. I fell in love after I came to film and have returned several times. Not a single time I made it out sober. Mama Kim is indeed a personality. An unfiltered one, I must say. One that Dutch people can only feel comfortable with. Anytime Korean guy come in, six people come in, they do not get coffee, they touch a lot of witches, so that is something. Only 51 coffee drink, 
They give a hard time and say, oh my God damn you. Get the hell out of here. You, 60 people drink only 300 you want? Not even one fishy money out. I said, get the fuck out of here. I talked to bad. Then there's Chris, an old regular to whom this bar has always been an oasis amid all the busy party vibes of Vitae. Hello, Soji Kero. Yeah. Hola, Soji Kero. Yeah, always. You do? Yeah. I, I Chris, you're a regular here? Only he used drank a Soji Kero. Used to be. <laughs> In my youth. <laughs> uh, I'm just looking through. Oh, the whole bottle? Yeah. I'm still curious how this is. Is it only 6,001? Yeah. It's a bottle of soju in it. Oh. That's, that's too cheap. Yeah. Don't give her ideas. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same bar as it was when they first moved in. Same bar, same lady. Except you got a few years older. <laughs> we both. We all. We both. But there's more to Itaewon's history. I couldn't believe it initially, but Itaewon has a spooky foundation, almost literally. So now here's something that I didn't know about ET1, and it's actually quite an interesting fun fact, the dark side of ET1. Right over here is the hill that forms the, the spine of modern ET1. This used to be the largest cemetery for Seoul. Yeah. Back during the Joseon era, commoners weren't allowed to be buried inside the city. So this was the largest cemetery. They were all up here. But like I mentioned, the Japanese, when they took over the base, and they pushed all the residents out. They moved them over to this way and they had to get rid of the cemetery. And it was rushed. And just like in Poltergeist, spoiler alert, they moved the, they moved the headstones, but not the bodies. Uh. And uh, people are still finding bodies, especially now that a lot of wealthy people live here. Uh -huh. And when they're doing renovations, they keep coming across skeletons. Uh, one guy, uh, they were just renovating and they came across seven or eight skeletons. Oh, wow. <laughs> Didn't they find bodies in the, was it the Samsung mansion? Yeah, that's what it was, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's crazy. I think everyone just, the collective consciousness forgot that this was a cemetery, and especially when, when it started gentrifying and wealthy people started moving in, had no idea this was a cemetery. Ooh. It still kind of is. A bit spooky though. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. So there was one uh, a famous girl, she was buried here, one of the independence fighters. Yu Guan Sun. Yu Guan Sun. Supposedly her burial site is up here on the ridge. It's controversial where this, her body's actually there though, but there is a memorial for her. <laughs> the old uh, one class fans. Uh, yeah, but it's I such bet. an iconic photo, man. It is. ET1 class. Uh, is this the bar? This is the bar. The bar? The bar that was in ET1 class. The funny thing is that for the longest time, no business lasts more than six months in this location. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just it was just cursed. Oh. And then I guess that's why it was available to, for filming the, the show because it was always empty. <laughs> and now someone's come up with a mock-up of the one in the in the show and it's been staying in business since then. All Even right. survived Corona. Good for them. Yeah. Yeah, ET1 has definitely changed a lot. Most of the, the bars from the early 2000s, they've all closed. And uh, ET1, like a lot of other neighborhoods, um, has, you know, developed. It's blew up. You know, it's, it's glitzy, it's shiny now. It's a whole different crowd. Before it was a bunch of, you know, you know drunk old foreigners, which I like. <laughs> and now it's, a, you know, it's young and beautiful. Which is also nice. It's more vibrant, a lot more money here. As long as the you know neighbor, the neighborhood's staying alive. Mm -hmm. But you can't expect things to you know stay the same forever. Okay. Hey. Uh, good luck with your future projects. Thank you, sir. And uh, stay in touch. You as well. Yeah. Bye. We've only touched the surface of Itaewon, and although I did my best to give you as much as possible, there's always more. When the Yongsan garrison moved to Pyeongtaek, Itaewon changed a lot. The Itaewon crush brought new changes too. Itaewon never stays the same. We haven't even touched upon other small communities, the underground scenes or the origin of the name. But if I had to describe Itaewon right now, I agree with John's words. Itaewon is a portal to the outside world. But I think you can go as far as to say that Itaewon is simply a place to party to many people. Thank you for watching. Hado.